So now in this final video on plant hormones, we're just going to briefly be discussing the more recently discovered hormones. All the hormones prior were known as simply classical plant hormones that have long been established as very important plant hormones with many different classes and subclasses and types and variations of them. The recently discovered hormones are, of course, recently discovered, and they are as follows. The first class is known as the brassinosteroids. So in the name, you can already sort of tell what type of hormone it is. It's very similar to a steroid derivative. Um, specifically, it's similar to something that's within us. It's similar to cholesterol and sex hormones, like testosterone and estrogen. So that's the similarity between them. That's probably why we have that naming. And in terms of function, brassinosteroids are pretty widespread. They're involved in cell division. They're involved in elongation. And they're also involved in xylem differentiation, making sure that the xylem successfully is able to do its job of promoting or of conducting those water and dissolved materials. So, those are our brassinosteroids. Don't worry about the mechanisms behind these. We're just broadly going to be going over these uh, functions of these specific recently discovered hormones. Moving forward, uh, after the brassinosteroids, we can look at the jasmonates. The jasmonates, sometimes referred to as just JAs. These are fatty acid derived, FA for fatty acid. So in order to make a jasmineate, you have to start with the fatty acid sort of backbone and then add different functional groups and stuff to it. Then you get a jasmineate hormone. The jasmineates function in the following. They are involved in fruit ripening. So again, we're seeing things that are showing over, up over and over and over again. And of course, that's because hormones interact with each other and help each other out. There's always this combinatorial effect of hormones that's seen throughout plant hormone study. So fruit ripening, pollen production also, and there's one more function, and that is in seed germination. So what I would be very comfortable doing is when you see something repeated, like seed germination, we've seen that before, we've seen fruit ripening before, we've seen cell division and elongation before, be able to group all of the hormones that fall under those broad categories of plant growth um, together. Make sure that you understand which ones work together and which one may work antagonistically with each other as well. Finally, last one in terms of the recently discovered, it's called the strigolactones. That's our next our final class, the strigolactones are involved in seed germination. So there's another seed germination, two on this uh, flowchart, a couple on the previous seed germination. And another very important part of the strigolactone job is to establish one of the most important mutualistic relationships in the world called the mycorrhizal associations. So the strigolactones are going to be uh, involved as a hormone to make sure that the physiological response, which would be making sure that there's a mycorrhizal association in between the plant and the plant, the plant roots specifically and the mycorrhizal fungi, therefore, thereafter. Um, so that, that covers our recently discovered plant hormones. Just know the basics behind them. Be able to group them with the associated functions of the previous hormones. And that ends our discussion on plants. I know a lot of people are probably very happy about this. Again, plants are difficult to study because we don't usually take a great uh, appreciation for them. They're very much uh, seen as things that are there and not worthy of further discussion. But as you can see, hopefully as you saw through these last couple of lectures, plants are incredibly complex things. They have incredibly complex life cycles, growth patterns, and hormone uh, control that allows them to be some of the most successful organisms on planet Earth. They're all around us for a reason. Hopefully these last couple of lectures have proved to you why they're all around us and why they're so successful and why they are so abundant and why they are, of course, worthy of appreciation.